We've already presented several amazing stories of survival this evening, but our next one is especially unique. It takes a young man from the brink of death to the pinnacle of success, a journey that no one expected him to make. Ever since he was a young boy, Kent DeSormo dreamed of becoming a jockey, regardless of the dangers involved. And away they go. Brisa Damar came away well. Being so a jockey's wife is very stressful. Game. The danger of um, his work is just it's something that you can't get used to. Every race, you just sit and hope that he comes back okay. This young man is an athlete of the highest caliber, and he was winning many, many races. Kent was having a wonderful year, and um, also we we're expecting the birth of our first child. At the beginning of December, Kent was uh, well on his way to becoming the leading monies earned in a year jockey in the entire history of horse racing. And this, I'm sure, was his target goal as he was riding early on in the meet at Hollywood Park. December 11th started out as just another average racing day. Nothing in particular early in the day told me, gave me any signs of what was to come. And it's a day I'll definitely never forget. Kent was riding number 11 that day, Judge Hammer. It was rainy. Um, the track was listed as, as fast, but it was wet and quickly getting muddy. Uh, it was a good break. It was clean. The horses were running well. Judge Hammer was the favorite in that race because of his past performances that showed that he looked like he was going to win. Moving up from the inside is Judge Hammer. Now with Cartagena Slew 7. From the, the horse I was riding was Cartagena Slew. He has one run, one strong run. He'll give you everything he has and my instructions were to save it for the stretch. Now, rounding the far turn is when the race really begins, and Kent took his horse to the outside coming down the lane. They're coming down the lane, and they're coming to the eighth hole. There were four horses right across the track, and then Judge Hammer kind of came between those as they spread out and took command as they were coming down the lane. Here comes Judge Hammer, all rolling up strongly. Judge Hammer... Coming to the wire, Kent gave the horse two cracks with the whip, and it suddenly veered across the track and into the path of Joy Scott's horse. When I hit him, it was, it was shocking. I, I saved my horse for the finish, and in, in the stretch drive, he was giving me everything. And I look up and I see the 11 horse loose on the outside. You see a loose horse, you look for a rider, and there happened to be right in front of me, and it was too late. Judge Hammer lost the rider. The impact was, was incredible, and it scared me to death. I felt sick to my stomach. When I returned to the jockey's quarters, I felt like I should call his wife to let her know what had happened. My initial feeling um, when I heard about Ken's accident was, is it going to be this time that he's really hurt bad? And um, it was. He almost died the first night. Uh, they couldn't get his brain to stop bleeding. There was too much swelling, and they didn't think he would make it. The stress and worry caused Sonia to go into premature labor, but Kent astounded his doctors with a miraculous recovery. Even with all of the injuries he had, he managed to get out of the hospital and be there for our child's birth. Can you imagine being all broke up, can't go to work, but you get the most wonderful Christmas present in the whole world. There you go, Joshua. It will be a day that I, I get chills. I have chills right now thinking about it. December was mentally a roller coaster ride for me. I had like seven or eight fractures that led everywhere, but the main fractures, they went all the way across my head this way and that way. and. Well, I was out for six weeks, deeply concerned about when in the world am I going to be able to ride again. When Kent was rehabilitating, I definitely had some doubts of him ever coming back, mostly because of the equilibrium problem. I got dizzy on, on occasions, you know, if I would stick my head down between my legs and then stand up real fast. I was dizzy, and I wasn't about to play around with horses until I could do that. 
In the meantime, Kent used a mechanical horse called the Equisizer that duplicates the rhythm and pace of a running horse. It has a bridle on it, you know, it even looks exactly like a horse's head and everything, and, and I can sit up there and, and ride, you know, so actually what I would do is I would watch the replays at night and I would ride nine races. When the field would turn for home on TV, I'd start riding the Equisizer, so it was what I used to rehabilitate. I wanted to prove that I could do it again. Can I be number one again, you know? Can I? And several weeks later, he had his chance. Coming back since been injured in a spell on December the 11th, last year's nation's leading rider, Jockey Cantus Olmo. On the day that I rode my first horseback, Shrewd Vixen, I can still see the the bars of the gate in front of me, and I'm thinking, am I gonna fall? Am I ready? What are these people gonna think? I have to perform like I've never performed before, but the adrenaline pump you get about the idea that you might win, that's what makes you forget about the fears of what might happen. Now, where'd I go? As the doors open, I, I swear for 30 yards, I was completely lost. It was like, <gasps> Brisa DeMar came away well, so did Shrewd Vixen from the inside gate. The first thing I did was cut the corner, split the horses, you know, went through every tight spot I could, whether it was the right or wrong decision, just to prove that I wasn't scared. Shrewd Vixen gets the lead, Common Threads a late run too, but it's Shrewd Vixen in front, and Shrewd Vixen going to make Kent to Sorbo return a winning one. Shrewd Vixen wins it from... This guy was almost dead. And he came back and he won the very first race. That shows you what kind of a champion athlete this guy is. 